The story takes place in a kingdom called Butangi. We are introduced to the king who is referred to as Mtemi Bokono. He rules the kingdom with an iron fist. For years now, he's been the alpha and omega in this land. His word is final, and he does as he pleases with the land and its inhabitants. Bokono is the archetype of your average tyrannical leader. Let's go through the checklist. Amassing a whole lot of wealth and land, check. Having a council of leaders whose sole purpose is to praise his leadership, check. Fragile ego and hates criticism, well of course, and believing that it is his God-given right to rule over everybody, well absolutely. So this is basically the type of person the inhabitants of Butangi have to contend with as their leader. In this kingdom resides a woman called Tanya who has two sons, Malusi and Gege. Malusi is a patriot. He deeply cares about Butangi and worries about the future of his people. Gege also views himself as a patriot because he sings songs of praise and has sworn allegiance to Mtemi Bokono. It can be said the two brothers don't necessarily see eye to eye when it comes to politics. So the story starts off with Mutemi Bokono's administration arranging a meeting where he's supposed to address his subjects. Of course, they've prepared well as they expect a huge turnout and people rejoicing and singing his praises. He's their beloved leader. But to their surprise, on the meeting day, nobody shows up. They get really mad and want answers. Where are the people? Do they not want to see their leader? Well... It turns out there's a group of young people rebelling and telling people to boycott the government's events. After they've done their investigation, they come to the conclusion that our old friend, Mwelusi, is the leader of this particular group and he must be arrested. So they arrest him and try to interrogate him. My man does not budge and he just claims he loves his country. So he's basically detained without trial because the king's feelings were hurt. During his time in jail, his sister and mother try to visit, but they are told they cannot see him. They cannot even personally give him food that they've prepared, having to leave it with the guards, who so greedily eat the food while Mwelusi starves in jail. There's one decent guard, though, who tries to persuade the other guards to give Mwelusi food, but he's just one person in a corrupt force, so nobody really cares what he has to say. Mwelusi's friend, Atega, hatches a plan to help Molusi escape. She makes mkate wa wishwa, which I believe is unleavened bread, knowing that the guards will not eat it and hides something like a nail file in the bread. So when she goes to visit Molusi, she takes food and bread and liquor with her. As it is in their gluttonous nature, the guards start to eat the food and drink the liquor, but decide to give Molusi the bread, as such kind of bread can only be eaten by a prisoner. And this is where Molusi finds his escape route. While the guards are drunk out of their mind, Molusi cuts the chains he was shackled with using the file and escapes. The leaders of Butangi are furious that Molusi has escaped. They cannot believe that the guards were just right there and Molusi escaped. So they're trying to find answers. How are they going to get Molusi? This is going to look bad on the kingdom. You know, you have, you're supposed to be the supreme leader like Kim Jong-un, and nobody should be able to go against you. And now there's this guy who's been supposedly inciting people against you. You've locked him up, and he has found a way to escape. So this really looks bad on Temi Bokono. So now they're trying to find out what are they going to do about Molusi? Where is he? What are they going to do? One of the king's leaders, you know, one, of, one of his, one of his like, uh, advisors, uh, he hatches a plan. He says, okay, we can call his brother. So they call Melusi's brother, Gege who's basically sworn allegiance to the uh, to Mtemi Bokono. He, he's basically in love with the, the way things are. He thinks like he's going to be loved. He's going to, some, somehow things are going to turn out good for him if he just acts the right way, the way that the, the leaders want him to act. So basically they call Gege. They tell him how his, uh, he's going to be married to Mtemi Bokono's daughter if he can able to help them take care of Molusi. Basically, by take care, I think most people know what it means when in a movie says, yo, you got to take care of him. So basically, Gege is just fantasizing how, wow, he's going to be awarded land, and then he's going to get to marry 
Mtemi Bokono's daughter. So he leaves now with that plan in mind. He has to find a way to get, get to Mwelusi. In the meantime, Mwelusi and his friend Atega, they're just, they've been going around trying to you know, hide from the guards and everything. People, the search continues on. During this time, one of the guards, remember the decent guard from the, uh, who, 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 who was trying to convince the other guards to give Mwelusi food? Finds out about the plot that the, king, the, that the king's people have on how to capture Mwelusi and how they are using his brother Gege. So basically, he goes after him. He tries to look for Mwelusi wherever he can. Gege passes by his mother's house. He's like, hey, uh, have you seen Mwelusi? Whatever. He's like, oh, she starts asking a few questions, but he's like, I want to apologize to Mwelusi. I now see that Mwelusi is right. I want to reconcile with my brother. Obviously, he's tricking his own mother. What kind of person is that? So basically, she tells him, yeah, Mwelusi has gone to the well. Which basically all, the reason why Molusi is actually going to that well is because the, he wants to show the people that even if the kingdom banned people from using the well, we're going to do it. We're going to rebel against this, this kingdom. All right, so basically he tells, uh, his mother Tanya tells Gege, you can find him at the well. That's where he's gone. After Gege leaves, the guard comes, the decent guard with another fella from the from the king's elders thing, who's also at least decent to, to 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 some extent, they ask him, "Yo, have you seen have you seen Gege? Have you seen Molusi?" Tanya tells them, "Yeah, I've just told Gege where Molusi is. They're headed to the well." So basically, all of them go gather gather at the well to check what's going on. Where's Molusi and everything? Gege finds Molusi. He tells them, "Yo, brother, I have really I have something really important to tell you, brother." We have to speak in private and tell you something. It's about mother and everything. You know, he makes it look like it's a family affair. So basically, him and Mwelusi go to the side. After a while, the people hear a huge, like, screaming coming from the direction Gigi and Mwelusi are coming from. You know, they run to find out what's going on, what's going on. Mwelusi's been stabbed by Gege. Yep, that's what happens. His Gege betrays his own brother because he was told he's going to be married to the Temi Bokono's daughter. Little do these people know that that was the final straw. That was it. I mean, you cannot continue ruling people like this. And it has to reach a breaking point. So back at the king's palace, you know, they're just like, oh yeah, Molusi has been taken care of. Gege is there. Okay, one little thing that was left out, Mtemi Bokono never actually gave his daughter to Gege. So basically, Gege is right there just shouting, saying, yo, I was promised that I was promised that I would marry your daughter. Even though Mtemi Bokono has told him, yo, I'll give him land and whatever he needs. But... The daughter, no, 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 not for a commoner like him. So basically, Gege is uh, trying to complain. He's taken to another room. During this time, the the crowd, the people of Butangi are approaching. They're approaching the castle. The, they see people coming, so they're wondering what is going on, what is going on. Atega and all the other people who are supporting Mwelusi come in, barge in, and they grab these people. They're like, they want to kill them, actually, at that, at that particular moment, because this is what you've done. You've killed Mwelusi. He was our hero. Uh, they they start talking, deliberating on it. They're like, no, let's not kill these people. We'll just jail them, and then we'll create a new Butangi, a new government, new everything. So basically, this is how this story ends. And why it's called Kifo Kisimani is because Mwelusi is killed at the well by his brother. And that's that's basically a summary of the book. There's a lot that I've left out, obviously, uh, about just how horrible the, the kingdom was. But that's basically it. It was just about a tyrannical kingdom. They thought they could do whatever they wanted. Until one person decide, decided to rise up and, you know, basically it's the old saying where you can, you can kill the messenger, you know, but once the message has been implanted in people's hearts and minds, there's no way of, uh, there's no way of killing that message. So I, I, I'd like to believe that's what uh, Kidako Amberre was trying to say. The message now continues on and the fire continues burning. So basically that's Kifo Kisimani and thank you for listening. If you'd like us to do more books, you can uh, comment down below. Yes, we've seen your other comments on the books. We've, we've been trying to look. Some of them have become a little bit difficult to find, but we're, we're still trying to look for them, and we'll continue to, to do more of these books. Thank you.